Hi everyone, Shannon Tipton here, and welcome to the Learning Rebels Coffee Chat, where all the cool L&D peeps hang out. While you're here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future chats. Today, the cool kids are breaking down how to build continuous learning habits. Let me ask you, when did you last enjoy the satisfaction of learning something new? I mean something really new to you, something that gave you that elusive light bulb moment and truly tickled your brain. Professional growth is indeed the mantra of many L&D people, but let's not forget about your personal development. Ongoing mental stimulation is important for cognitive and emotional health. In other words, it makes your brain happy, and who doesn't want that? So the big question on the table is, what are your tips and ideas for surrounding yourself with habits that inspire you to invest emotionally in your own continuous development? So without further ado, let's get to it. Well, welcome everyone to today's coffee chat where we are discussing continuous learning and building a habit of continuous learning. Last week, we had a really great conference, not last week, the last coffee chat, the week before last, we had a really great conversation about what it means to be an instructional designer. And we went through our Miro board and we wrote down all of the different skills that might be applicable to the job and where our focus might be, which tied in very nicely with the learn something new conversation that we had about building more accessible training. So all of these things are starting to weave together and become aligned. And it made sense to me. Let's have a discussion about how we can continue this path. So if we are going to be good stewards, as we discussed, about being good stewards of the industry and being good stewards of our business, and then also leveling ourselves up, that means building a habit to continually invest in our own skills. Now, one of the things that I put in the uh, email to you guys yesterday was all about, yeah, Shannon, yada, 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 right? You hear me talk about this all of the time. You you know, it's almost broken record. Like, you know, Shannon's always talking about building those, those skill levels. Okay, fair enough. I also would like you to think about how this affects you in your personal lives as well as your professional lives. You know, when when we focus on skill building, when we focus on continuous learning in our personal lives, it really does help us mentally. It, in short, it makes the brain happier. And who doesn't want that? We all want happy brains, right? We're all talking about mental health right now. And a key to our mental health is really investing in expanding our world and expanding our universe. So if you are not digging the conversation about professional growth and development right now, then think about how this might apply to you personally and in your in your day-to-day lives, right? So we can have that conversation because it all works the same. It's all about building a habit about what it is we want to do, whether it's about baking bread or it's learning new Camtasia skills, right? The path to success still looks the same. And this is where I would love us to have this conversation. And what I'm doing is I'm also breaking out the big rock goal sheet from last month, because I thought, you know what? That was a good tool for us to use to set our BHAGs, right? Our big, hairy, audacious goals, which we talked about in January. But now we can scale this down. So we don't necessarily have to be have big, hairy, audacious goals for baking bread, but we can start to think about what's the path we want to take. So if we want to learn new Camtasia skills or video editing skills, what does that look like? And what's our plan for that? And how are we going to build a habit for doing so? So let's talk about building a habit of continuous learning. What is it? What are some of your uh, practices that you use 
to build that habit or to try to build the habit? What is it that you are trying to do? So who would like to contribute first? Douglas. I'll jump in. Um, I'm, I'm bad at, oh, well, actually, I'm really excellent at breaking the habit, but I try to step away from my desk whenever possible for lunch. And I actually kind of walk around the desk and I sit down and I don't know, I'll grab the latest ATD magazine or a book or throw a little record on a record player or grab the LinkedIn learning or something like that just to kind of step away or print out an article and kind of noodle through it for a second. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's so easy to just, oh, well, I'll get to it or I'll print something out. I'll be like, I'm going to read that when I get home after dinner. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I like that. So that's sort of a process of let's shake off what we're doing right now so that way I can find the mind space to do something new. I like that idea. Yes, Benita. And I did see your hand too, Kelly. <laughs> So one thing that I do is um, because I'm driven by my Outlook calendar is that every week from, I think I have it from 8.30 to 9 a.m. that I have, it's called professional development time. Mm. And it's only a half an hour. And, but the thing is, if I've already done some professional development before that Thursday, then I, I mark it as complete. But if I have it, it forces me to actually think about it and do something during that like half an hour time. So that's my schedule time that I block out every single week. I love that. Here's what I love about that. We, we say that often as a good practice, right? Is to mark that time in your calendar as something that is concrete and not something you don't disturb, but I love that you added it as a task item. So when we, when it's completed, when I've done it, I can actually mark it as completed. That's genius for me, because I don't know about you, there's a certain satisfaction, isn't there, of being able to check something off a list. And I think that that's a great level up, if you will, to adding something to your calendar is to actually add it as a task list to support it. So thank you for that. Great idea. Um, so for, for me, I actually, I know it sounds strange, but when I are, go on a weekends away or vacations, I bring one of the books I can't ever get to at home. <laughs> and right. I know that sounds crazy, but like last year I read Patty Shank's book. I had it for a while, could not get to it, could not get to it. And I was like, finally, I'm getting to this. And, and, you know, everybody else went skiing and I stayed in the condo and I sat down and I read like half the book and made all kinds of comments in it. And I find that if I'm saying, okay, this is vacation, but part of vacation is relaxing and learning something new. To me, that is, I'm in the mindset when I'm away from my desk to learn something new. When I'm at my desk, it's all about work. And Shannon knows all about my work. And so, so it's all about work. And, and that, thought of trying to to squeeze in professional development when I've got people pinging me and everything, but being away and having in a different location, I feel like my mind is more open to learning mm-hmm. something new. Mm-hmm. I like that. You're right. We, I think that there's a certain mental trigger, isn't there? When you're at your desk and it's that trigger is that here is my workspace. So mentally you have that here is my workspace. So not unlike what Doug was suggesting is like whatever that step away looks like, if it's vacation time or if it's coffee time or whatever it is, is to get rid of the trigger you know, that may be holding you down. And the book Habits by Charles, uh, is it Duhag? Duhag. Darn it, I can't remember. Maybe on, maybe you can find it. Um, He talks about in that book about the importance of recognizing triggers and those triggers create habits. And I think that's in in part Duhag. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, So that's an important one. One of my favorite books, by the way. So thank you for that, Kelly. And uh, Dr. Carroll, I see you. Yes, thank you. Now, when I started about 49 days ago, when I got, you know, you know, get bogged down in my computer writing or dealing with some learning and development, every time I, I, I got up, maybe to go to the restroom, I carried my phone and I had downloaded this app on my phone, Duolingo. So every time I got to the bathroom, I did 
a lesson in Spanish. I'm trying to learn a couple new languages. That's what I did. Like just for 10 minutes, I go, go to the restroom, carry my phone, get on the Duolingo, do one lesson, and then I get back. It sort of resets my mind, a fresh perspective. So when I get back to my desk, I can go back to what I was doing. And I've got one topic in Spanish down and I'm back afresh with whatever I was working on. Oh my God, that is, that is fabulous. You know, I, and one of, um, uh, Chris Coldonado and Chris Coldonado did a learn something new for us a while back, but I was just talking with her recently to that point, Dr. Carol, she was saying, what is it that we do in particular down? What is it that we do in particular downtime? So when you are in line at the grocery store, you know, or when you are on hold, you know, or, um, when you find yourself in those moments, like in line at the post office or, or what have you, you know, so when you find those little break of times or in, in your example, you know, you're on your way to the bathroom or at the bathroom. You know, so you have those, those little encapsulated moments. And is there something you could be doing in those moments? Right. And I just love that. I, that is just so unique and special. So thank you for sharing because it really did bring up that memory for me about that conversation I had with Chris. Awesome. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I know this is sort of boring, but um, mm -mm. the email blog, the blogs that get emailed to you all the time, you have to like actually read them. It doesn't count if you just get the email. You have to actually read them. <laughs> but I, I put them in my email box and um, I, I have a policy, like as soon as I'm done with something, I move it to the done folder. And so sometimes they stay there for a while, but that's, that's really what I do. I like it. And no, not boring, not boring. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a great practice, right? It's about building the habit of whatever it is you do. And I get my email right now. is just so cluttered with uh, all sorts of stuff that I find that I read. And sometimes I don't read it. To me, it depends on the mood that I'm in. It's like, what is it that I want to learn about right now? And so that item might stay live in my mailbox and then something else may get archived, you know, for later or it goes into my Feedly. So, you know, it's just a matter of how are you organizing and curating the information that comes to you, right? And I love that. If you, again, it's that checklist item, right? So you move it to done and it's like, oh, I did something. I did something and I, I'm going to move it and it's going to work for me. So yes, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> uh, oh, and thank you, Stella. Participating in the coffee chats is a good habit. I like to think so. And I'll tell you, it helps me. So you guys might think, oh, this is, this, you know, it's a great community for all of us to be a part of. But let me tell you, it helps me too. Because with each one of these topics that we discuss, I've got to do research. I've got, I've got to look it up. I've got to refresh my memory. I have to go back and do some studying. and. You know, so it helps me too. So we are all in this together. And that's what I love about our community is that we are all in this together. All right. Okay. Yeah. And professional organization. So if you are a, um, a member of ATD, like you, your local chapter, right? Local chapter of ATD, or if you're part of the guild, you know, so there are lots of different groups that you can be part of, but it is all about what Renee said. It does hook back to what Renee said. If you are a member, you need to be active. You know, so the value is not necessarily what, in this case, what the Learning Rebels Coffee Chat gives to you. It's what you take away and apply, right? So what is it that you're doing with this information? Okay. So here's what I'd like us to do. We are going to go into breakout rooms. Uh, and I'd like you to have a discussion around something, something you would like to focus on. And it doesn't have to be a huge long-term focus item. It could be this month I want to focus in on. So our, our next Learn Something New is all about using Canva for visual design. So maybe that's of interest to you right? Visual design in general, or maybe Canva or something along those lines is, is of interest to you. So 
all right, so now in the next month, what are, what are you going to do to level yourself up in that area? You know, and you can start with the big rock area and then you chunk it down, right? So that's the process. We determine the goal. We're going to level ourselves up with visual design. And then we're going to chunk that down. Does that mean reading something or taking a course or practicing? What does that mean? Right. And so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go into some breakout rooms, have a discussion about the things that are of interest to you. And remember, it could be personal. You know, maybe maybe you want to paint or write or bake, you know, or, or something. And, and you want to learn more about that. So let's not forget about our personal selves. What, how did your group do? What was, what was the, what were the conversations like? Really good. Just about setting goals. And we had some personal goals and some work goals, but my favorite goal, um, I don't see her. Is it Stella? Anyway, like yeah, she's in, right there. where we, because sometimes we're working in isolation, the people that we're doing all this training for don't, they don't always see the work that goes into it. So bringing in those people into your process makes them appreciate you more. And it, it, it does more for the industry too, because y'all know the work that you put into something, but by the time you show it to everybody, it's all pretty and clean and all of that. They didn't see the multiple drafts and everything that you went through to get that information. So we right. have to educate our peers to what we're doing for them, for their benefit, basic, basically. So that's the goal. The goal is how are we going to communicate more across departments about what we do and how we do it. Yes. And Benita yeah. apparently is working on signature cocktails. So oh, yes, I, please. I see a combination goal here <laughs> when yes. we do our retreat. I think it's time for a retreat. I, I'm thinking. <laughs> and so we've got our bartender. So yes, Benita, talk to me about your frosty adult beverages. Well, I told them that. So this year I am trying to do a cocktail a week just to learn how to be a mixologist. So I make sure that when I'm at restaurants, I'm always at, I look at the menu with their serving in terms of cocktails. I usually sit at the bar so I could talk to the bartender. How did they come up with things? And I do one every week. Um, none of them have been successful so far. I haven't liked any of them, but I make sure that as I'm planning the ingredients that I get for that specific cocktail, that the cocktail I had before, I'm using some of those ingredients uh -huh. because, and, and then I add like a new flavor or um, like, a, like maybe I'll add like sage or basil or um, like hibiscus, something different, but I'm making sure that I'm kind of methodical. Right. And the way I'm doing it and, and asking outside people who are already in the industry, how do they make theirs and how do they come up with that? So, yes. And then do you keep like a log book? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. I do the same thing. I keep a log book of, of what, what I've experimented, like if I'm baking something, so what, what I've experimented with and what seemed to work and, oh, don't do that again, you know, type of thing, because I will certainly not remember it the next time I go back around. So I love that. And so, yes, it's professional, personal, because we're, we're humans and we should be well-rounded, right? And so we should be investing in, in things that interest us too. Who else wants to share what happened in your group? Uh, oh, Kelly. Yep. Doug is going to be working on some really cool stuff. And we got to Doug last, so we didn't get to hear all the stuff that he was going to work on, but he's going to work on AR this year. And, oh. and I think that's so totally cool. <laughs> I do too. So let's give Doug his moment. So Doug, share with us, what is it that you're going to be working on? Well, what's, what happens in the group stays in the group, you know? Uh, no, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, it's all right. So I've been, I've been. Uh, what I was saying is, I've been beating the drum about this is uh, this is a relatively simple technology that has massive. Uh, I mean, it's applicable in so many different arenas. So we actually got, uh, I got approval to get it onto our 2023 department goals, and uh, we're doing some meetings next month and. By the end of the year, they want to have at least three individual instances of how we roll that out, like into a course or whatever. The example that I'm going to start with is our ethics officer writes wonderful messages. He's super passionate and uh, and 
but it goes out in an email and a PDF. And sadly, not everybody gets that or it's posted up on a board. I mean, it's so antiquated. It's like, mm, this is a, like a perfect example to have the person speak with the passion and mm-hmm. their message in their voice and just do it as simple as, oh, scan the QR, put them on my desk. And then, you know, here's my ethics officer kind of right there giving me the little two minute spiel. And it's like massively impactful. And by the way, what I didn't get to share is this year's Super Bowl, they're going to help the entire learning curve for AR and have been already because there's a, uh, one of the peers, I forget which one, is doing a thing with Peyton Manning, and you can even have him passing the ball and stuff like that. So, look at your uh, look at your oh. local beer vendor places. Yeah, everybody's like retail is a is a, is such a great opportunity, and if they're jumping on board and they're making it commonplace or mainstream, it will accelerate our ability to go. Yeah, that stuff that's really cool. You know, we can do it here. The only thing really holding us back that at that point is our imaginative exactly. imaginative ability to apply it into uh, just a plethora of places so and couldn't agree yeah, more a, yeah I'm a, little, I'm a little humdrum about it though <laughs> it, uh, it's worthy of excitement it is and um for better or for worse i've i've always said that l and d are like are lagging indicators right and what that means is we catch on to a technology at the tail end when everybody else is moving on to a new technology. And such is the case if we even look at QR codes, for example. QR codes have been in the in the retail space, in the universe for not just years, but in some cases Thank decades. You. And we're just now globbing on to using QR codes to help us in our L&D efforts. Right. You know, so there's there's a lagging indicator there. That said, that's why I think it's really important. So when we had Debbie Richards on for our learn something new for AR and VR. In the messaging that went with that was it doesn't matter if your organization is or is not using that technology. What's important is that you understand how that technology can be used for your next gig, for your next project, or if all of a sudden in 2024, your organization surprises you because your CEO said, oh, I saw this cool thing on the Super Bowl. How can we use that? And now you know how, right? And and so that's what building this habit of continuous learning brings us. It gives us a sense of preparedness, you know, and, and confidence right? About what we do. So we can, so when they come to us and say, what's all this AR stuff? You can say, I got you, you know, I I got you covered. And that to me, regardless of the topic is what's exciting. You know, that we can, we can call ourselves the professionals that we are because we have this backlog of knowledge. So let's see. Maureen, you got to go with your, uh, your quote. (laughs) Butter free in 20. Oh yeah, yeah. I had said at the at the when we did our, our B hags or big hairy audacious goals, I had said mine is the clutter free in 23, which I did not create, but I have adapted it. Um, because it can be then that goals can be broken down in so many different ways, professionally, personally, you know, mm-hmm. at home, etc. So I said I just focus on the um the ones at personally and at home, just so that my line of sight is uh is clear so which will help clear my mind it will help clear it just it can lead to a lot of positive outcomes so it's about just setting the timer for five to 15 minutes even a day will make a difference because over time that will add up um Mm -hmm. if you multiply that by the 365 days it's uh, a lot of time then spent just uh clearing and, and the first time through may not see what i see the second time through or third time through but um it is really fun to remove things, get them out of the house, be more aware of what comes into the house. And um, then when I do go back to a room or a cabinet or something, I open them, I'm like, oh, that's right. I did that. Like, and it just, <laughs> then you're like, <laughs> <laughs> right. And it was after, it was especially after clearing, you know, cleaning up after Christmas. And then suddenly the room looks so big because it's like, you know, it doesn't have a tree in it and the whole bit. And 
rearranging furniture, it's like, wow, this has been under the TV stand for a while. This needs to go. So I was just realistic about as, as opposed to my fantasy self. I have to be realistic about who, who I am today, mm -hmm. what is serving me today, and, and trust that if I really did need something again in the future, I will have the means to be able to acquire it. So um, just kind of trying to bless other people with the. Uh, <laughs> I love access. that so much. I, I so you, so too. is it, it's going yeah. well? Your clutter -free it is. I mean, so, and my goal is also, so when my kids come home from college and they, they can see a difference of like, what's not then like, you know, staged in the hallway, ready to be, uh, you know, you know, and, 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 or even if I put something in my trunk to like drop it off at green drop right away, don't like drive around with it in my car for three weeks. And then, you know, <laughs> yes, it's yes. like just things right away. And it just, it's amazing how much lighter you can feel when it's like, oh, that's not there anymore. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I use, I'm in a part of a buy nothing group. And so it's also about connecting with people who were in my community. And, um, I try to, I try to give away more than I take in. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but you just never know. I mean, sometimes it's just, you know, like mm -hmm. the one was a, the uh, balance board, the simply fit balance board. And I was like, yeah, I, I put in the thing. I was like, no, you act, have to actually use it in order to get the results you're trying to achieve. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> and, and the woman, the one woman goes, oh, you picked me. I never get picked. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, <laughs> It's just funny. So anyway, clutter free in 23. So clutter free you know. on put the hashtag in there. Yeah. Clutter free in 23. That's it. I think that's all of us. But I think you bring up a good point is it's about um, having an awareness of yourself and what you what you can do to set yourself up for success. So I am I am not the most organized person. It takes, you guys have no idea what it takes for me to pull off some of the things that we end up doing. And it's not all me, that's for sure. You know, so it's, uh, it's like, I need help. And if you're realistic about that, and if you're honest with yourself about that, then you see, you know, certain levels of success come your way. And for me, it's, it's okay. I have to do this in really small bites. Otherwise I'm just going to overwhelm myself, you know? So on and I are working on this really massive project that I'm going to be excited to announce to you guys here pretty soon, but it's massive. And I at first tried to tackle it by myself and I like, I cannot get this done by myself. So you have to bring somebody else in. And then it's, Okay, how far down can I chunk this out so that it becomes manageable, you know, without getting in, into this, I heard this term, uh, complexity trap. So it's a complexity trap of where you keep adding things to your list and making something more complex than it has to be. You know, and we keep falling. I personally, I'm only speaking for myself. I've, I fall into that a lot. So for me, Maureen, what you said there really important is about what knowing yourself and when you know yourself and set up those littler goals and it becomes ha happy, right? Because you're able to do the smaller things. I think that's, that's awesome. Okay. You know, Shannon, may yes. I speak to something? Absolutely. Um, you, you just mentioned this term about complexity trap. Mm -hmm. And like one of the things that I had made a conscious decision to kind of like walk away from a little bit were to-do lists, because unfortunately what I have through the years saw in my, my mom's behavior is what now you have just quickly termed because the list never went away, right? Mm -hmm. it, it just compounded on top of itself. And then it was like, and it, she was turning it into an onion. And then, you know, there, so that complexity trap, it's like, if you, if the tool then I think like overwhelms you, right? So if you started off thinking that you're going to use something because it was going to help you organize or declutter, and then you recognize, I guess, maybe like what you mentioned, uh, Shannon, and then you're like, if you feel like you're in the thick of it and you don't know how to claw your way out of it, I think then also when we're talking about 
this topic today, it's also then recognizing, um, I, and Maureen, you were, you were saying it so eloquently, like the things that no longer serve you, right? So giving yourself grace that if you were trying something, right, and you thought you put it down on, on this, the big, hairy, audacious goal sheet, and you're like, oh, this is what I think I'm going to do. And then maybe if you're in the middle of it, just like when we do our work in our design or something, and that's why it's important for it to be iterative and try to get mm -hmm. that support, that even if we're in the middle of it, that we don't get stuck in the sunk cost theory of it, where it's like, oh, crap, but I've, I've got to keep going this direction because I've already said it or I committed to it or it's on a piece of paper to be able to then give yourself grace and say, this isn't working for me. I'm recognizing that I don't resonate with it, or it's it's not actually helping me to feel successful, or that I'm moving the needle forward. And then to be like, oh, that's okay. Then that means I need to let that go, mm -hmm. right? That, oh man, I'm now finding myself in this complexity trap. Mm -hmm. And maybe even in our designs, right? Like, and that's why uh, I've, I've taken to heart a few sessions that I've been in about having branching scenarios that turned into monsters because you just kept going, oh, and I'm, I'm forgetting the, the SME who I sat in on our session and she was talking about, you know, the me, you make sure like come back then to a center point, right? I'll, and clip that branch and then move forward so that you just don't have these continuous fingers and prongs and and just going right. out and out and out and you're like holy crap how do i get out of this scenario right uh, so all of this just kind of it has does this interconnectedness to it when you mention complexity trap yeah for sure and when we're talking about continuous learning right so how does this all apply to continuous learning and i love what you said there erica there's a time for you to say there may be a time for you to say well i've one learned enough I've learned, I, I feel like I'm good to go right now, right? Okay. And, or this is just not appealing to me. I thought baking sourdough would be the thing. You know what? It ain't. I'm moving on to croissants now, right? So it's about knowing where you are in, in all of this and, and being able to set up again, those habits that allow you to say, I'm, I'm going to do this, but this isn't working for me. I'm going to create a new habit around something else, right? Or maybe a different path. So maybe it's like visual design. I don't care about um, colors as much as I really am in love with typography. You know, so maybe there's a different path that you can take. And sometimes we, I think we do, we lump this all together and then we just throw away the baby with the bathwater and we just don't think about what are some other newer, more exciting paths that we can take that really do appeal to us. Benita. So you, as we talk about um, continuous learning and we're trying to get skills, sometimes some of those program software or things we want to get skills in are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And if we have companies who don't pay for that and you kind of do the trial, by the time you do the trial, you haven't learned the skill properly or completely. Mm -hmm. So what are people's suggestions um, for stuff like that? Great question. What do you all have? What are some suggestions? So when that? they have tutorials for a trial or whatever, watch all the tutorials and then start your trial because, and then you can go back to the tutorials if you need a refresher on something, but just watch them first. That's a great idea. Like um, articulate, right? Yep. Watch, watch all the things, download all the things, then start the trial. I like that. I like that. What else? What other ideas? You know, um, if they do have a free version, even if it's greatly reduced, play with the free version. Like, so I got to work with Canva and I did it under its free versioning. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I had an idea and I, I pitched it to my supervisor, um, you know, I was he, he went ahead and he said, okay. And I think even to put in branded content, I didn't, I don't think I had to, no, I, I probably paid myself. It was my choice because it was a, mm -hmm. a low threshold. So that might also be an option that if there's something that you want to incorporate in your toolbox, if you have the funds, then um, do it for yourself. So right. like I own my Camtasia license. I've never 
relied on because it's it's a low enough entry point. Uh, I pay for my Lord Icon license. I pay for my, um, there's another one in there, but if you have the financial ability to do so, then just also pay for the thing itself. Uh, clearly not as easy to do with something like Articulate. Right. Um, to build on that, I might also suggest there might be a similar product out on the marketplace that might be less expensive that you can practice with and build certain skills before you can buy the product that you really want. Oh my goodness, like Powtoons or Beyond or Doodly, you know, so there's, there are a lot of programs that do that particular thing. And one is certainly going to be less expensive than the other. It may not be, you know, everything that you want it to be, but it may allow you to practice with it until you can afford the thing that you want if you buy it yourself. And, and I agree. I used to do that too. When I was in a corporate space, I just would buy the licenses myself. It's like, okay, this year, this license that's on, that's on the list. And we'll just do that. I do the same thing with conferences. And now even as an independent contractor, I absolutely have to pay for my own way on in some conferences. And it's just like, you know what, that's just the, okay. All right. So we don't buy this. I want to go to this conference. And sometimes that's what we do. But there are also some, um, uh, you might want to look into, some of them offer discounts for certain, um, for certain things, like if you're going to school. So if you're going to school part-time by any chance, some of them offer educational discounts. So look into what they offer and others do just give you, you know, like a, um, like a scholarship for lack of better terms. So sometimes look at that. So yes, great conversation, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great weekend, everyone. You all have a better one. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for hanging with us for another Learning Rebels Coffee Chat. Well, there you have it. Hashtag all the ideas. Here's the thing. What we're discovering is we're all different. And what works for some may not work for others. However, the feeling of learning something new is invigorating. So how do we get there from here? How do we keep growth and development on our radar? Well, first, I encourage you to adapt the Big Rock Goal Sheet to incorporate learning goals, be they for baking bread or leveling up your learning designs. Then take the chunks and build them into a practice. Move from listening such as today, move from listening to these ideas to taking action. For example, I love the idea from Douglas. First, we have to shake off the triggers of work. This may mean getting up and walking around for a moment or two to prepare your brain to absorb new or different knowledge. Or this from Benita, not only use your calendar to make a meeting with yourself, but make it a task list item. Everyone loves the feeling of marking something as done. It's simple, but very effective. Lastly, Dr. Carroll shared with us that being aware of what you are doing in the small moments of downtime is important. Can you take a small Duolingo lesson while you are in line somewhere? Having that environmental awareness can help you build in learning habits. What this boils down to is for you to make the active commitment to make learning a priority. Listening here is great, but now what? How are you going to take action? In the show notes below, I have placed the Big Rock Goal Sheet, a short video on how to complete it, and some resources about developing habits. And I hope you put them all to good use. Well, you want to join us live? and you know you do, go on over to learningrebels.com and check out the events page and sign on up. In the meantime, stay curious, be rebellious, and take over the world. Bye for now.